This standard has a key role to play in changing things in the built environment sector. Um, it's very much about an inclusive environment, accessible environment, it looks at intersectionality. So, you know, women make up a huge part of the workforce. We need to make sure that the facilities that we provide through our buildings can support them to do, to flourish, to do their jobs in the best way possible. And you need a standard sometimes to get that kind of rigor um, and drive things forward. The adjustments that employers can make which can be very, very simple. I'm just looking at their existing building, understanding the guidance and understanding what, what's happening to women on a day to day basis and making minor, minor adjustments that can help everybody every day. So these will be things like identifying um, cooler places in the workplace that someone can go to when they're experiencing a hot flush, right through to having really good exemplary uh, washrooms and toilet facilities that women can readily access. They can freshen up. Maybe there's a shelf there if they have medications such as they're going through IVF treatment or maybe they're using sustainable uh, menstrual products. There's a shelf that makes all of that easier for them. I believe this standard can have a huge impact on everyone. I, I think there are already uh, men who've come up to me and said that they had never appreciated before how significant um, some of the impact can be and that the changes they now have a desire to make. And I work in the design community for the built environment and there's a lot of interest in trying to make these fairly minor but very, very important adjustments for people. To me personally, um, it's, it's driven by family members, some of them very young, who've experienced horrible experiences of perimenopause, sometimes through surgical intervention. I personally had um, quite an easy ride through the menopause period, um, but I fully recognise that many don't. And I think it's so important that we provide this support to people. I also feel with... Uh, uh, menstruation and everything and young girls as well really really important that we provide uh, much more attention to this and it, it really in a way it's crazy that we haven't done before now for me um, when I was developing this standard, I think I had quite an easy ride because when I came to look at it, it was fairly late in the day and all of the, um, the policies and procedural guidance was already drafted in its first form. So I was able to see kind of the big picture and see where the built environment might fit into that. So that was really, really helpful because I could see where the gaps were readily that I could contribute to. And for me, a key one was definitely going to be around that sanitary accommodation and how we get that absolutely spot on. But also, I had to consider women who weren't necessarily in an office, who might be uh, peripatetic, they're traveling, and they might be on a building site, they won't be readily, you know, good access to nice toilets and so on. So it was trying to capture some of that as well. I think this standard could also be used by organisations considering their wider equity uh, remit. So, for example, um, we, are, we are not just a female experience uh, menstruation or uh, menopause. We will also be perhaps a mother or a wife or um, somebody who's working in different fields, somebody who's experiencing childcare or parent care. All of that's going on at the same time. We're also very different in our abilities as well. So for example, if I take neurodiversity, we as a whole as a society are neurodiverse. There will be some people who are neurotypical, some people who are neurodivergent, and that will include some people who may experience menopause and menstruation and hormonal changes differently, purely because of their medical condition, disability or neurodiversity. So we know, for example, and this is in the standard, that um, Women with ADHD, for example, may be self-managing their condition and their symptoms very well at the point they, they reach menopause and suddenly it's a game changer. They're suddenly experiencing that in a very different way and it's sometimes a more profound way. So if, for example, they're hypersensitive to light and noise, it may suddenly become worse and then they've got to find new ways of coping. And the built environment can contribute to that, but obviously so can management and policy and just having that flexibility in there.